fourth straight session of bad performance for the NSC 20. Is that something to start worrying about? Uh, uh, today we saw a bit of the counters holding off. I believe that in the, in the coming days, probably next week, we'll be seeing an upward trend because really the, the, the rally will not hold on for so much. Also, the, the Middle East crisis, uh, it has affected somewhat, but really I expect to see the market coming up in the next week. Let's talk about that middle. I'm optimistic. Let's talk about the Middle East crisis. It's had some bearing on the shilling. It's having some bearing by way of foreigners selling off some of their Kenyan stocks. Um, the economy seems to be buckling to some extent. To the extent that, for instance, tea exports have been halted to Egypt, which is a major importer, and auctions are being held off. Um, has that had a bearing on any agro stocks? Uh, yeah, we have seen Kakuzi stocks coming down. Uh, Sassini also fell despite a uh, trading calm dividend. Uh, yeah, it, yeah, it has, a, it, it, it has a, a, a bit of an effect on the, agro, on the agro stocks. Okay, and another variable on the agro stocks, Crispus, is this threat of looming drought and what it's going to do for food inflation and petroleum inflation. Um, is that already starting to seep through the markets and affecting the prices of some of these stocks that would be uh, affected? Uh, no, we had seen the, 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 there was an MPC on Friday and the central bank governor was of the opinion that uh, it, it has not yet started to seep, uh, I mean to, to seep into the economy because food prices are not trading high. We, basically, we have a lot of food in the market. We have maize selling. I mean, we have the prices of maize, which is a staple crop, has not really been affected that much. So going forward, we don't expect much of it. And basically, the, the, the forecasters predict this is only going to hold on up to much. All right, local airlines are said to be ferrying people out of Egypt. Um, it's got a great bearing on the, um, uh, the aviation industry in Kenya. The situation in Egypt, has it started to impact in any way on KQ stocks, for instance? Uh, KQ stocks, really, we, we, we can't say there's such an effect. But then, because on the flip side, they might be ferrying people out, but they're not ferrying people in. The aim of business is that when you take someone in, you need to take him out. That's why you make a profit. So it has not, uh, uh, the effect hasn't been seen. Yes, I can agree it's there. Also combined with uh, the price of oil going, uh, which is definitely going to go up, uh, it will affect in the future. Let's talk about um, risk factors and the fact that foreign investors see Kenya threatened in one way or another. Generally, we've seen many African bonds, uh, the yields going up, which is a, an indicator of a risk perception about Africa. Have we started to see in any way Kenyan bonds responding to the situation in Egypt? Uh, I would say no, because in my opinion, foreigners are not the biggest investor in the bonds market in Kenya. Actually, in Kenya, most of the investors are, we can say that all the investors are local. So it, it, its, its effect won't be, will be marginal, if at all there will be any. All right, let's talk about the equities market in particular. Over the last few sessions, although the market has closed down, commercials have been doing fairly well. High turnover and good-looking prices for some of the commercial stocks. I know Nation Media Group's been doing well. Some of the banks, like uh, Cooperative Bank, did well in the last session. Uh, how are they for performing today? Uh, today? Today, the funny thing is that we had all of them coming down. Uh, I believe, but I still believe that in the coming weeks they'll be, they'll be up because, because of the double digit uh, increase in profits that we expect. All the banks probably, apart from Barclays, where we don't have so much, we, I'm, I'm not really optimistic about it, but all the other quoted banks, I am optimistic about it. All right, we've just heard news of Jubilee's expansion drive further into new markets, 12 new markets. Has that had any positive impact on the stock? Yeah, we, 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 we expect the stock to go up in the coming days. Though, like I said today, the financial sector was, was, was really down. So, but in the next coming days, we expect uh, uh, it to come to, to, whatever, to react. All right, gain is in the market today. And what for you as a buy? Uh, what would I buy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Tough question. <laughs> I'd buy Equity Bank. <laughs> All right. Equity Bank, and largely because what? It's the largest bank by customer numbers. Uh, they've introduced some innovations by way of microcredit lending facilities and easy transfers. 
What makes the fundamentals uh, of that stock? Uh, well, it's an indigenous bank. It's not really affected by, 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 by the foreign uh, shenanigans. Um, it's an innovative bank. They always react well to competition. I can say they are ahead of the pack. I mean, the only competition with Equity Bank is Equity Bank. Yeah, okay. That's a good uh, PR statement for Equity Bank at the moment. In terms of asset allocations, I mean, if we are seeing foreigners withdrawing a little bit from the market and there's been some concern that uh, locals weren't particularly active at the start of the year, but they're in there with institutionals as well, where should they be putting their, their, their money? Should they be looking, for instance, at the uh, banks that we're speaking about? We've seen some of the industrials doing really well, service stocks like advertisers doing particularly well, irrespective of whatever exogenous shocks? Uh, well, like I said, this, this, the, this downfall is not going, I don't see it being prolonged. I believe that uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the near, I mean, in the short term, that is uh, in this quarter, we'll see an upturn. Well, KPLC would be a good buy. And uh, also, like I said, for all the, I mean, the financials, Jubilee, we've just talked about it. That is where we should be putting our money. Uh, Scan Group, the economy is, in, uh, is, is at a recovery stage, and we all know that at a recovery stage, it's the cyclical industries that really do well. All right, and then finally, the IMF just released a report saying for them, Kenyan growth is forecast at 5.7%, which is a little less optimistic than authorities who believe this economy could grow 6% and upwards in 2010. What are their reservations, and what's your view on growth? Uh, I'll start with my view on growth. I believe we are headed towards 6% uh, because basically the biggest monster that we had was uh, the political risk. But we Kenyans, as, as, as it happened during the, when people were promulgating the constitution, uh, really the stock market didn't react so much. Going forward, I don't expect it to, I don't expect it to lose ground mainly because of that. Uh, the World Bank, the, the, the World Bank are a bit concerned about the raging drought. But then again, this one is only going to be experienced in the first two quarters. So I beg to differ with them, and I'll put my growth rate at 6%.